Today we're here with Matt. We're going to be talking about the top 10 actors Amazon want to return to any new Stargate franchise. And we've got a little bit of a surprise. Welcome to Sidetrack, your sci-fi TV and movie channel. That's it. We are rebranding the channel. Uh, actually, you've even changed the logo at the top corner. Well done. We are... <laughs> Matt has been working really hard on this new design. Um, it's actually going on the branding and everything now as well. So side-trek.com, you can get this new design. It looks so good on the hat, mate. Honestly, it does. like a beanie and a baseball cap. It looks amazing. I've ordered myself two. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I tell you what as well, I am going to be giving a little bit of a giveaway in the new year with some of this branded stuff and a couple of other Stargate-y things when I get around to it. Um, but, you know, I thought that would be a nice little cheer us up in the dull grey months of January, but um, we'll come back to that in a little while, but for now, we're not really here about the rebranding I, no. I don't know if you realise that, we're here because we got this list from one of my sources at Star and at Stargate because we got this list from one of my sources at Amazon and they've been, I've done two videos on it, I've told you what the two, two top names on this list were, but just to give a quick rundown um, Amazon are, have done a bit of research and they've done this algorithm or whatever and they've decided what the top 10 people that they would like to bring back to a new Stargate franchise if possible and not necessarily who they'd like to bring back but who would have the most impact if they did return to the Stargate franchise. A, a little bit of an um, add-on to this actually because I asked why was it Jason Momoa like top because he's like the biggest star, one of the biggest stars in Hollywood at the moment and it's, apparently they do include something in there that sort of like um, gives them a, a, how likely it is that they would actually return, if that makes sense. So they sort of factor in, like, he's way too famous. <laughs> so it knocked him down the list a little bit. Um, but It'd be great if he did come back. But... Oh, wouldn't it be cool, man? And he does stuff. As, I, I think if they did like a one-off streaming series, I think he could. I think they could talk him into it. He did see it, an Apple. We spoke about other series that we could potentially see from Stargate, a series based on um, Ro Ronan Dex as a runner, like before yeah. Stargate Atlantis, would be fantastic. And he'd, he'd, he's, he he would be good. It, it, I want him to come back. Yeah. Yes. It'd be so cool, wouldn't it? Even if he got back yeah. just for a couple of episodes, like a big special double episode sort of thing at the end of the series or something, that would be really cool. But anyway, mm. top of the list for me, Absolutely no shock at all was Richard Dean Anderson. Um, yeah. So that's the video I did a couple of days ago, talking about Richard Dean Anderson. Now, I don't think... It doesn't really say on this whether they would come back as cameos or whether they would come back as returning actors. I can't see Richard Dean Anderson coming back as a regular. What, what, what do you think? I, I, I can see both ways. The original reason he left was so he could spend more time with his family, do his charity work, etc. Um, nowadays, he might have a little bit more time, so he could mm -hmm. be a reoccurring character, but not a massive character. So kind of like General Hammond, for example. He could be that kind of character where he's in it pretty much every episode, but he doesn't really do much. Yeah. I Something think that really could be a, a good way to go about. Yeah, a massive time effort as well, doesn't it? He could basically come on for a few days every few weeks sort of thing and do a bit of filming and it's so it's a recurring character but like you said yeah it's not a major character um my thinking with any of the sg1 team if they come back i mean i don't know what you think about how, how they would do it for me it's i think it's really easy they've got a new team and they go through and they come across a problem that sg1 encountered back in the day so they almost have to like bring sg1 back as almost like consultants or something. Mm. I think that would be a really easy way to bring back the entire team. And I actually think they could bring back all of the original SG1 actors yeah, really yeah. easily. And they do they it. They could e easily bring them all back if only for one episode. They could yeah. all, they could all, it could be like the big moment where they all like reunite. Like it could be a, we, ha we have Jack in one episode, Sam in another episode, Daniel mm. in another, and then Tilk. And then towards the end of the season, they, they form together and SG-1 is back for that one yeah. full hurrah kind of thing. 
Yeah, yeah. And then that launches into, and that gives us a chance as well to get to know the new team and the new actors that they would bring in. And then we launch into the new franchise, the new projects or things. So a nice wave goodbye to what was, and then it bleeds through into the, but anyway, the second person on the list was a complete shock to me. And I, and I don't really get it. And I, I do, I'd love to know what your opinion is, but it was, it's Robert Carlyle from um, SGU, so the Rush character from Stargate Universe. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't get it. Any any ideas? <laughs> I, don't, I don't get it. He's a massive name. And he was a big name before. But that, that's the, the whole reason they got him for Stargate Universe, because he was a big name and he wanted to kind of have a bigger show with Stargate Universe. I know it didn't go that way in the end, but yeah, he's still a big name. People who watch like Full Monty, things like that, who have seen him in in the past, might come back and they go, "Oh, Robert Carlyle's in this," and then that it, it might be like that. We've talked about cross pollination with audiences before. Having a big actor, even though he was involved in Stargate before, people may not know he was involved, mm -hmm. and it could bring people back in. And and obviously, if it is, I like saying I don't know how they spat him out a second in the algorithm. I don't know how that happened but we don't know 100% what their criteria was for this. But, um, I mean, if they if they basically think... The one thing is that um, the Eli character, is David Blue? Um, David Blue, yeah. He has got some... He's quite a strict conservative, and he's got some quite um, serious, like, um, political views, which might think... And I'm wondering if there was something in the algorithm that sort of, like, filtered out negative comments mm. and messages and sort of think oh there's some there's some reason because I, I will tell you now he doesn't appear on the top 10 list at all david blue that's surprising um, that's very surprising yeah but if they've put something in the algorithm to say that we want somebody from sgu um and david blue's knocked out because of other things because i say i don't know how to fix it i also don't know how much human interaction there was in this um, whether they've done an algorithm and they've gone, you know what, we're spitting David Blue out because of this or because of that, or actually, just... but I actually think from a story point of view, if you're going to, because if Rush is in it, then the obvious thing is that the women's were going to save the, the crew from SGU, yeah, or at least some of them. If David Blue doesn't survive, they kind of, if Eli doesn't survive, they kind of have to explain that, don't they? And because he's the one that's left awake, how do you do that? He's the easiest one, I think, to kill off because he was the only one left awake. Something but, happens to the destiny. He dies. They're all still in cryo. <clears throat> exactly. But yeah. as fans, I think there was always a Team Rush, Team Eli kind of thing going on with, with SGU. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure the Team Rush side was bigger than the, the Team Eli side. I love Rush, don't get me wrong. He was a very interesting mm. character. Yeah. I preferred Eli. So I, I'm very I surprised he's like not it. even on the list at all. I, I would put, if I, if I was to rejig the list, Richard Dean Anson, obviously, at the top. If if we put Robert Carlyle at second, David Blue has to be third because it's mm -hmm. Rush and Eli. They come they come as a pair. Yeah. Well, we'll rejig the list at the end, I think, if you're up for it. We'll, 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 we'll yeah. do the list what we think would have done. But I tell you what, who's third on the list, I think, for me, is obvious, and I'm surprised she's not second, is Amanda Tapping. Um, she's always talking about Stargate. She's obviously very active still um, as a director and a, a producer. Um, she goes to all the conventions and things. And, um, I mean, Brad Wright talks about it so much about how he would like to bring her back and that we would see General Carter. So if we were going to see Brad Wright's version of Stargate, we would see Amanda Tapping. She she would return. Um, I think that's an easy one, isn't it? She's a fan. He's a, you know, she's a fan favorite. Her and Jack. We want to see one of them at least, because we want to know if they got together or not. And what? Uh, and yeah. even if it's only one of them, we'll get that answer. Yeah, and I know. And I'm, for me, I think they should do it the way Brad Wright was talking about doing it. We're just having like a little throwaway line, like Brad. Apparently, the line was going to be, "I've still got your toothbrush." Um, Jack to Sam when they sort of came up face to face. So like that they were together, but they'd split up. And so, I mean, I think that gives you a lot of, with one line there, I've still got mm -hmm. your toothbrush, sort of gives you 
a big with a lot of lot of information of like you know like, it's like, like how long ago was it did they only just got what what tell me more yeah. oh there's like yeah it's so teasing isn't it well but, <laughs> but at the same time tells you so much fourth on this is again it was one that i i'm not even remotely surprised by this michael shanks um the only thing i think they might struggle getting him back is i he's on um i think it's chicago hope or another doctor tv show in america one i don't watch um, I, I think he's a regular returning character and I don't know what sort of contract he signed for that. And if they're filming this this year, getting Michael Shanks back for more than one or two episodes might be difficult. But he's yeah, all... probably be able to do a guest appearance at least. Yeah. Unless he can get out of the other contract and come back to Stargate. Mm. He's always said he'd come back. He talks about it all the time. Um, he probably tried to bring his wife with her. I'm not going to try and say her name. I think it's Alexa Doig, but I don't really know how to pronounce it. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Bo Bridges' um, character's daughter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was a doctor. but um, <laughs> And she was also an Andromeda and a few other things. So she's stunningly beautiful. But Lexa, we'll call her Lexa. Um, I probably just set off my um, my listening devices. On my <laughs> I just phone. had to look <laughs> over there to make sure. <laughs> um, and there's also rumours that he would come and, and, and direct as well that that would be that again if it was brad wright's project then that's what they'd use to tease him in so we want we don't just want you on the screen we want you behind the screen um but yeah. how would he you bring, bring so Daniel much to the sh he could bring so much to the show as well obviously being part of it so if he if he was only behind the camera he's got all of the experience of being on the camera and all of the stories that come before it so let's let, let's assume let's for example say whoever wrote an episode didn't get something right he could be the guy be like no actually you've got to do it like this he could mm. be the consultant yeah if you're not going to bring in brad wright or somebody like that as a consultant he's the one yeah. for me i think michael shanks is the one that i would like to have seen come back as a regular when we said we we did our little sgc project where we we thought about the first five or six seasons of of what stargate would look like if we brought it back we sort of mm. made him the um new head of the sgc the you know like the non-military the civilian head of the sgc then that now the sgc was um stargate commander was known everybody knew about it so there was a civilian mm -hmm. oversight and everything else so I, I for me he's the easiest to bring back as a regular he's the most I mean, obvious choice for being head of a civilian-led stargate program because he was always the voice of reason within mm -hmm. the military branch so now it's outside. If it was outside of the military, it makes sense for him or someone very much like him to be mm. in charge. Mm. Exactly. Yeah. And I'd like to say, Ini is one of the most likable actors, I think, um, one of the most likable characters. So Jonas Quinn, when he came in and replaced Daniel, he was a likable actor as well. And I thought they did a really good job replacing him, but he was not Daniel. And, no. you know, none of us were upset when he went, really. I wanted to see more of Jonas. I would have liked it if he played more of a reoccurring role and didn't just leave the show entirely. But mm. I think he did have something else in the pipeline as he left. So that's why he yeah. never came back. Yeah, and he, I, he did one or two little guest episodes, didn't he? But that was it. Fifth on the list is Jason Momoa. Um, he is one of those actors that he's brilliant in everything he does. Have you seen the Netflix film he did? The Christmas film he did? Yet. Not yet. I forget no. what it's called. Honestly, watch it. Slumber. You can watch it with the kids. Slumberland. Slumberland. Or Slumberland. Um, you can watch it with the kids. It's it's brilliant. It's really, really good. And he is fantastic in it. He plays more of a comic sort of role. Um, and he's going. But I, I knew in Stargate Atlantis that he would be a big star. You just you just knew it. Yeah. You could tell he had like that cheeky grin and everything. And um I, I know if it was anyone who's built like he is. Mm. Like he is action star, like physique. Like you just knew he was going to do big, great things. Yeah. I mean, he did act, so that's not that great. But he does some other great things. <laughs> he did that Conan movie as well. That Conan movie. The only thing, the only problem with that Conan movie it wasn't a bad film, but they made him shave his beard off, and he looked stupid. <laughs> so no. I'm like, I'm One of my beard. favorite things he's done. Is the, there's like an advert for something. I can't remember what the advert is. It's like, oh, when I go home, I want to just relax. And he's taking off his muscles. He takes off his hair. And <laughs> <laughs> I 
peels his tats off first, and then he takes and he's just his skinny little fellow. <laughs> Sixth on the list, actually, was another actor again. That if I'm doing this list, I'm putting him higher up. David Hewlett. Oh, David Hewlett would be top for me, for sure. McKay was, I mean, from two points of view, I like to think about this, like if I was the producer, how likely is it we could get him back and how easy and believable is it to write him into the story, right? So a lot, we get a lot of comments and I go, no, 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 we've just got to have this guy and this guy. And that's just based on like who you like, who you want to see. But um, I'm like, think, I, I'm always thinking like if I was actually writing this, how, how easy would it be? David Hewlett, would do it in a second. McKay is just a brilliant, lovable character, which we all kind of love to hate at times, but he's just he's just brilliant. And it's he would be really, really easy to write in. Yeah. He's one of those characters who always wants to be involved. Like even when he's not like invited, he'll make himself involved. And I, I feel like in a new a new version of Stargate, he would just be there. And no one invited him, but he's there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he would probably. Yeah, um, but yeah, I, I, 100%. And, and obviously, then that would bring in Atlantis, and we'd get to see Atlantis again potentially. Because again, that's a really easy way to bring Atlantis back into this new Stargate project. And, and like I said, he's uh, as uh, uh, for me as a writer, if I was going to write the show, he's just a dream character mm. to, um, as you know, to bounce people off. Um, if if they relate, did bring him back. That that guy, uh, oh, what's his name? Zelensky. The his, his real name's oh, like yeah, David yeah. something. I'd like him to come back if they brought back McKay because their their two chemistry together was really. Number seven on the list. Don't know. I put a three up. Number seven on the list. Um, actually related to David Hewlett would be um Joe Flanagan, and bring him back Shepard. Um, again, for me this is a no brainer, and I, I mean. If, particularly because he's so good at bouncing off characters. He hasn't particularly aged that badly. He still he looks, looks good. He's a, he is a massive Stargate fan. We know how much of a Stargate fan is it because he tried to buy it. Mm. Um, you know, it's for me, he's, he's, he's easy, you know, and I'm, and I could see that. I, they I reckon he'd it. do it in a, in a heartbeat. Like they, as soon as the new Stargate came out, even if they didn't ask him, he would ask. He would yeah, I could get onto his agent and, and yeah. Yeah. I could see him being like at the studio door, sort of like, go, oh, let me in. It's like, well, you're not in this. It's like, fuck, I am. <laughs> I'll be in the background. It's like um, <laughs> Daniel Craig doing Storm, you know, being, dressing up as a stormtrooper just because he desperately wants to be in Star Wars. I could see Joe Flanagan just being an ailing. Or, Is that Joe Flanagan? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> um, this was really a surprise to me, though, because eighth on the list, eighth. Was Christopher Judge. Eighth on the list was Christopher Judge. Let's <laughs> do it again. My mother's. This is what I dropped for. my phone. <laughs> okay. I'll put this in the bloopers at the end. <laughs> <laughs> this one, though, now really shocked me, right? Because eighth on the list. Eighth was Christopher Judge. Do we really think that the eighth most least important or the, the, the I mean, eighth to bring Tilk back? Does that seem madness? Tilk needs to come. Tilk would be in my my top five. Yeah. But he wouldn't be eighth. He wouldn't be fifth either. He'd be in the top five, but he wouldn't be fifth. He'd be up there. Oh, see, who do you scratch out though? That's the, I suppose, the problem. Is um, who do you get rid of? But we, we, we can do, we can play that game at the end. Again, though, okay. again, from a, a writer's point of view, how easy is it bring Teal'c back? It's just, it's, it's a piece of piss. You know, he could, he could literally just be in a one episode, and it could be something to do with the Jafar or the Free Jafar Nation. Maybe there's yeah. a, a new, a new um, offshoot of the Jafar Free Nation. And mm -hmm. they're they're slightly evil, kind of like the Lucian Alliance, but they have to yeah. kind of get into the high the high council. And who's in the top of the high council? It's Tilk. I think an easy way to bring the Jafar back then, if you had a if you had a fraction of the uh, faction of the Jafar that were a problem, is just to make them that, that they think they should be in charge and that they're better than everyone else. 
because they kind of do <laughs> and kind of did. You know, they, they always mm. kind of look down on humans, didn't they? Even, even Teal kind of looked down on people, you know, particularly at first. He was just like, I'm pride and I'm, we're better than you. So it wouldn't be a, a leap to say that a faction mm. of the Jafar sort of thought, you know what, why, why are the Tauri in charge of everything? Why aren't we? So I think, yeah, wouldn't be they've all. got better technology than, than what we had when we first started, and they've probably got yeah. better technology now. They've yeah. probably done yeah, a lot of research after, in yeah. the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. You'd think so, wouldn't you? Um, well, ninth on the list. We're smashing through it. Um, ben Browdler came in at number nine. So, Mitchell? Browder. Browder. Browder? Browder. Browder, yeah. Browder? 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 Ben Browder. <laughs> if I just go... And then nobody can even. But anyway, Mitchell. So if Mitchell were to come back, he's he's a bit like Joe Flanagan for me. He doesn't really look that much different. Um, mm. he's he got. I mean, he appeared in a couple of the Guardians of the Galaxy movies dressed as a gold dude. He, he could walk straight back into this, and it wouldn't Did be he? like he didn't move. But, I'm gonna have to look this up. About that. I don't remember him in Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> Right, so Guardians of the Galaxy, you know the gold lot that are um, attacking the Guardians? And there's the yeah. gold chick who's in charge. Ben Bradla is the number two. It's like her colonel sort of thing. Oh my god, it looks exactly the same, except he's gold. <laughs> Since he's gold, yeah. Um, <laughs> number ten on the list, though, man, is an actor that I adore. And I, I wanted to go to a sci-fi convention this year. Um, just because this guy was doing um, photo ops and so you could have a picture with him. And they, they, they even had um, James T. Kirk, William Shatner himself, and then they're going, no, 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 I want to go see the other guy, Robert Picardo. And oh, yeah. I just love Robert Picardo. He's, he, he is the doctor, as far as I'm concerned. I know you're going to go, eh, Doctor Who? No, nah, he's the doctor. Um, and... And his character in um, in Stargate Atlantis was great as well. And actually, awesome. if he came back, I follow him on Facebook, though. He's got a screw loose. <laughs> he's got something wrong with him. It's, it's He's gloriously mental. <laughs> but um, I'd love to see him come back as well. Going back to when we were talking about Michael Shanks and potentially being in charge of the SGC. Um, or even, No, sorry, scrap that. Going back to when we were talking about... Um, like Richard Dean Anson and that coming back in as reoccurring roles. Mm -hmm. I would picture Richard Dean Anson coming in as a Wolsey type character, if not General Hammond. So he can come in like whenever, but mm. it'll be reoccurring in the sense that he's, he's definitely a character, but he's just not there all the time. Yeah. yeah like Wolsey yeah. was. And I, I, I even see, though yeah, Wolsey I don't think enough to be a regular character. Wolsey was in, in Stargate for like what? 40 episodes, maybe? Well, he was episodes? SG-1 a handful of times, but then towards the end of Atlantis, he was pretty much in every week, wasn't he? So he was, he was in Atlantis, charge for the last series. couple of seasons. Yeah. So, so um, yeah, 40 episodes is probably about right. But, but yeah, yeah, he was a regular by the end. But, um, yeah, but yeah I, I, I'm with you that I think as, a, as, a, as an extra character circling, he'd be great. Mm. Um and like I just love him as an actor. I just love him. I'd have, I'd have. I'm saying I'm just. I'm, I'm going to have to go to the next convention that he's there because I desperately want a photo with him. I have messaged him to try and get him on the channel, and he never replied to me. But I'd have loved to have had Robert Picardo on this channel. I'd have killed for it. But I might try again at some. That point. That would have been very good. Yeah. So that's the list. That's the top ten. So it's Richard Dean Anderson, Robert Carlyle, Amanda Tappin, Michael Shanks, Jason Momoa, David Hewlett, Joe Flanagan, Christopher Judge, Ben Bowdler. And Robert Picardo. Is there anybody on that list, first of all, that you wouldn't have on there? That I wouldn't have on there. Um, can you just say the list again. Richard Dean Anderson, Robert Carlyle, Amanda Tapping, Michael Shanks, Jason Momoa, David Hewlett, Joe Flanagan, Christopher Judge, Ben Bowdler, Robert Picardo. Mm. 
probably wouldn't have Ben Browder in there. No. Because he wasn't... I, I, I loved Cameron Mitchell, but he wasn't Jack O'Neill. That's the fair. original. Do you know the best thing about Mitchell's character were the jokes they made about how much he looked like Daniel? <laughs> that was the best thing. Claudia Black coming on and going, uh, oh, that's a very shallow gene pool, isn't it, <laughs> boys? And they just sort of like look at each other. And <laughs> that, that was the best thing about Mitchell, to be honest. Yeah. Um, and I liked him. I wouldn't have Jason Momoa on this list. for the Not, not because I don't want him to return. I don't think he ca- I don't think he would. I don't think there's enough money to get him to do it. Um, but if he did, Christ, it would be awesome, but it wouldn't be no more than an episode. You know, I don't, I, can't, I just can't do it. If he did. Yeah, it would be amazing. But um, I tell you what, I'm not going to say I'm going to scrap him off the list, but I'm saying if I, if I had to, gun against the head, I would go with Ben Browder as well. Browder, blah, 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 um, as well. And I would go, but if I had to pick a second one, it would be, Jason Momoa, just because I don't think, because of what I said. Do you know what, though? If I'd have done my own top 10 without seeing this, I don't think Robert Carlyle would have been on it. I really don't. I don't think I would have picked him. I wouldn't have picked him. But knowing he's on the list, I would keep him on there. Yeah. I, I think I would have swapped him for David Blue, and he would be a lot further down the list for me. I would bring back Eli. Um, if we were if we were going to remove a couple and add a couple, I would remove uh, Mamar. I'd remove Ben Browder, and I would add in. Um, <clears throat> oh, I've just had the name in my head. Uh, Viola Madaran, Claudia Black. I'd had her have her in, and I'd add in David Blue. Yeah, I did love Claudia Black's character, and to be fair, if you've got Daniel. How much do we want to see him and um I can't remember the character's name? Vala. 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 Um, but yeah, if you've got to have if you've got Daniel Jackson in there, how much do you want Vala as his partner? You know, um then Mar- because I mean that was just that was that was again some of the best bits of series nine and ten was them two bouncing off each other. They were fantastic. But yeah, they kind I of got together in the final episode, but obviously that timeline didn't exist, so we want to yeah, see if so they finally thing. get together in, in the current timeline. In reality, yeah. I think I would. For me, David Hewlett would be... Uh, Richard E. Nansen, top of the list for me. I would kill to see Richard E. Nansen Agreed. in Stargate. I, I, I just love it. Um, he's lost loads of weight. He'd look better than he did at, um, at the start of SGU, to be honest. Um, he's top of the list for me, and I'm not having you argue. And you can try and argue if you want, but I'll just delete you from the video. And um, so it's no bother. It'd be, it'd be number one for me as well. Good. Good boy. Good boy. Follow my, my number follow, two would follow be Michael Shanks. Shanks. Michael Shanks, number two. Yes. It's David Hewlett for me. But for two reasons. I love him dearly, and I think he's the easiest one to get in. I think he would. I think you'd have to. Actually, if you told him he couldn't, I think he would probably try to punch you in the face and and run over you. And he's just not. All you'd have to do is just just go. Would you like to? And by the time you've got the sentence, he'd be at the studio. But I just think he could do so much with his character. Mm. That's that's for me. But um, but if they had Daniel, I wouldn't argue either. Yeah. I mean, my third isn't David Hewlett. He's my fourth. My third. Would be Amanda Tapping. It's hard not to want General Carter in it. It's really yeah. hard not to want that very badly. But you know what? I would rather. I think I'd rather have Vala. But Vala is not a wholly popular character within the fandom. I guarantee you there will be comments going, oh, God's sake, not her. She was awful. Blah, blah, blah. And I loved her. I thought she was great. I thought she was so funny. But no, Absolutely you got to bring Sam. I think you, you can do more with Sam, though, can't you? Sam is, is not just a good leader, um, a good character. She's also like one of the most intelligent people in the franchise. So anytime yeah. something happens, who are they going to call? 
Sam Carter. <laughs> yeah, that is right. I, I mean, what are you going to do if, if you got a star to blow up? You're not going to call Valor, are you? You're going to exactly. call. But yeah, I I don't think the list they've got that Amazon have put together here, um, or their marketing department has put together here, is is ridiculous. To be honest, there's nobody on there that I think what the hell is that that person doing on there? That's just stupid. Um, I, I question Robert Carlyle in second more because I just don't know how they got there. I, I just don't know. They, I don't know that. I happened. think it would be based on popularity, and because he's a big yeah. name, that's why he's number two. But saying that, why is Jason Momoa not third? Yeah, unless they've gone, unless basically they've already got a rough idea what the story is going to be in this first season. It's going mm. to do with SGU. So they've gone. We want an SGU character. Which one would have the most impact? Which would. Uh, you know, we don't know. We don't know how much, like I said, inhuman influence. I mean, somebody like Mark Fergus could have come in and gone, I want actually a character that's going to stir things up. Who would be the best person to bring in? Yeah. Rush all day then, isn't it? I mean, that's, Rush that's not that complicated. But, um, yes, that's interesting. But There could be like a, a trial for Rush. Like they finally get him back and they put him on trial because he literally put all those people's lives in, in danger. He killed that senator, essentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he's he's liable for that. Uh, see, that's a whole that's a whole can of worms. I hadn't even thought about. Yeah, you're right. The only one I'm a little bit befuddled by though is Christopher Judge in eight. I can't quite yeah. get my head past that because he would be really easy to bring back. He's really easy to tell a story about and to get into the story. We know he'd be up for it. I don't know of any political or anything like that issues with him. Um. The only thing I could see potentially being an issue is if he gets the, the gig at God of War. Which I don't think he will. No, there's, there's massive petitions for him to for do it, and he said he wants to do it. Whether they'll listen or not is another thing. And if he does, that means he can't yeah. really do Stargate. So we're kind of hoping he doesn't get it just so he can do Stargate, but also yeah. he is he is Kratos. So. Yeah, he is. And the only way they could maybe do it is if they CGI the character and do as a voiceover. Maybe. I don't know. But um, ah, it would be very cool if he got it. But then if he gets that, well, yeah, like you said, it would be very difficult to get him to Stargate. But that, yeah. sir, is our list. We have our nice new branding, our nice new logo. We have um, mm -hmm. all new designs coming up and some brilliant starting little sequences for the different videos we've got. You've, you've put a lot of hard work into that, Matty, sir, um, mm -hmm. in, and done it in ways I don't even understand. So well done. Nick. And thank you so I'm, publicly. Thank you so much because they look great. They really look great. I've actually pushed doing this video forwards because I've got a couple of videos coming up and I really want to use the starting sequence on. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we've sort of pushed this ahead a little bit more than we wanted to. But, mate, Merry Christmas. I hope you have a happy new year and let's hope for some really cool stuff in 2023. You too. And to everyone watching, have a good new year. Happy New Year, Gad. <laughs> <laughs> Say bye-bye, Matt. Bye-bye, Matt.